Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing heart failure. So in this next video, we're going to move on and we're going to discuss arrhythmias as possible precipitants for heart failure. So arrhythmia literally just means something is wrong with the electrical coordination of the heart. Something is wrong with the rhythm of the heart. So let's just start by reminding ourselves of the basic uh, normal electrical conduction within the heart. So remember, somewhere in the right atrium is a special bunch of cardiomyocytes called the sinoatrial node. And what is special about these cardiomyocytes is that they have the ability to sporadically generate action potentials at a rate usually around 70 to 80 beats per minute. Those action potentials spread from cardiomyocyte to cardiomyocyte across the atria and cause the atria to contract. Remember, there is a fibrotic band of tissue that separates the atria from the ventricles and stops the atrial cardiomyocytes from propagating the uh, action potentials to the ventricular cardiomyocytes. Instead, the only hole in that fibrotic band is called the atrioventricular node. It's around here on the picture, and that's the only way in which the action potential can normally uh, propagate to the ventricles. So it makes its way down to the atrioventricular node. The atrioventricular node conducts it through to the ventricles. It's then continued on by something called the bundle of His that splits into the right bundle branch and the left bundle branch, and these then spread it to the right ventricle and the left ventricle, respectively. That is the normal electrical activity within the heart, or a very brief account, a very basic account of the normal electrical activity in the heart. Anything wrong with that is then called an arrhythmia, and there are a huge number of different things that can go wrong with that. We are only going to discuss one, because it's enough just to discuss one for uh, the basis of what we're trying to say, which is an explanation of how arrhythmias can cause heart failure. We are going to discuss the most common one, which is atrial fibrillation, which uh, for short is abbreviated to AF. I assume I do have to write this out in full at least once, so I'll do this. So atrial fibrillation. So what happens in atrial fibrillation? So firstly, who gets atrial fibrillation? Generally, it's old people again. It's something that happens when you get older, if you are unlucky, that the, something goes wrong with your atria that lead to... Uh, that leads to utter chaos with regards to electrical activity in the atria. So, fibrillation. What does fibrillation mean? It means that the atria are no longer contracting properly. Instead, they are fibrillating. Fibrillating means shuddering. So, we discussed previously how the atria contract and push blood into the ventricles. It might not have a huge impact on um, cardiac output, but it, that is normal activity within the atria. In atrial fibrillation, they no longer do that. Instead, they just shudder all the time. So imagine the atria just shuddering. That is what it means if you've got atrial fibrillation. Your atria are just shuddering, fibrillating, rather than actually contracting and relaxing. The ventricles can develop this problem as well. That's called ventricular fibrillation. If that happens, it is a cardiac arrest. Your heart stops beating if that's the case, because if the ventricles no longer contract and relax, instead just shudder, you lose all cardiac output, and that's a terminal event unless it stops very, very quickly. However, the atria can fibrillate, and that can happen for years and years and years, and as long as the ventricles are still uh, relaxing and contracting, relaxing and contracting, uh, you can live on with that. Now, atrial fibrillation, however, can precipitate heart failure, and let me explain why. But before we do that, let me just explain what is happening with regards to the electrical activity to cause atrial fibrillation. So we've discussed normal electrical activity. Normal electrical activity is you know, action potential generated in the sinoatrial node and propagating across both atria and then down the atrioventricular node. In atrial fibrillation, everything goes totally chaotic. All the, you get action potentials generated all over the place and generally the corporate is thought to be the left atrium rather than the right atrium. So specifically it's thought that the bases of the pulmonary veins are the main culprits for atrial fibrillation. So the, the tissue here 
becomes, you know, gets ideas above its station. It starts generating action potentials on its own accord. And if you imagine having lots of different areas that are generating, that are now capable of generating action potentials, so let's imagine that all of these different areas here are generating action potentials, they can all throw off action potentials totally randomly and this can lead to total electrical chaos across the atria. So you end up with action potentials going all over the place at all different times, bumping into each other and stopping each other in their tracks. And this leads to all the cardiomyocytes of the atria contracting totally out of sync with one another. So usually, because everything's organised, they all contract at once together to form a meaningful contraction of the atria. If you have total electrical chaos because loads of cardiomyocytes all over the place have got ideas above their station and they're generating action potentials totally randomly, then you get the cardiomyocytes all contracting out of sync with one another and that's why you just get this shuddering, this fibrillating rather than an actual meaningful contraction. Now, why is this an issue? This is an issue because it can lead to the ventricles contracting too fast. So atrial fibrillation can lead to a fast ventricular response. So we write this atrial fibrillation with fast ventricular response. And it is only when this happens that atrial fibrillation can lead to heart failure usually. So let me explain this. So because you've got electrical impulses being generated randomly, it's possible that you're then going to get a far too fast a rate of electrical uh, conduction through the atrioventricular node. After all, there's far too many action potentials coming now, uh, so it's possible that then the AV node is going to conduct far too many of these, and therefore that the ventricles are going to contract far too quickly. That is called AF with fast ventricular response. A C with a bar over it just means with. So AF with fast ventricular response. This is commonly just referred to as fast AF. When AF causes the ventricles to contract too quickly, to beat too quickly, we call that fast AF. Uh, however, there's lots of cardiologists who have gone off this expression, and therefore the absolute correct expression is AF with fast ventricular response, although everyone still just calls it fast AF. So, atrial fibrillation alone does not precipitate heart failure. Remember, because the atria, even though they're just fibrillating now, remember their input to the cardiac output is not that important. As long as the ventricles are still filling up with blood and then squirting it out, that you, you can maintain a good cardiac output with that, even though there's no atrial systole anymore. So atrial fibrillation in itself is not going to necessarily cause heart failure. It can cause heart failure if it leads to fast ventricular response. So if too much of this electrical activity is conducted to the ventricles and the ventricles start contracting far too quickly, and you know they can re reach fantastic great rates, so maybe they reach... 150 beats per minute, then that can cause problems. Because if the ventricles are contracting and relaxing too quickly, then it means that the ventricles aren't going to have time to relax. So imagine this. So normally, the left ventricle contracts and then relaxes. When it relaxes, that's the time when it's filling back up with blood. If a new electrical impulse arrives too quickly, then what's going to happen is that that ventricle won't have finished relaxing back down by the time that it gets the signal to contract again. So it can then start contracting midway through relaxing. So let's say, just drawing a picture here, let's say it's only relaxed down to this sort of size. So it's contracted, it's midway through relaxing, it hasn't got back to its fully dilated state yet, so it hasn't fully reformed with blood. If another impulse arrives, then it's going to contract again, and therefore it ends up contracting on a smaller volume of blood. So you've got too low end diastolic volume here. It hasn't fully refilled with blood. And that is how you can then get reduced cardiac output from having this fast ventricular response. So AF can cause heart failure if it causes a too fast ventricular response. And this is why it is so important in people with atrial fibrillation to rate control them. So there are drugs that we can give that stop the atrioventricular node from being able to conduct too many action potentials. So they 
work on the AV node and they make sure that it only conducts at a certain rate, a normal rate, uh, and doesn't conduct too much of that electrical activity from the atria. So the main examples, the first drugs that we would use would be beta blockers, main example would be bisoprolol, and then if that doesn't work then we could add on something like digoxin, digoxin is very good at uh, rate controlling AF. What we discussed in the previous video is that tachycardia can induce a cardiomyopathy, so if you have AF with fast ventricular response going uncontrolled for too long, that can actually precipitate a cardiomyopathy, tachycardia-induced cardiomyopathy. So you can then get not only the arrhythmia directly causing the heart failure, but if you're developing a cardiomyopathy on top of that, you will then have that causing heart failure as well as the actual arrhythmia. And even if you then treat the arrhythmia, even if you get the arrhythmia under control with rate control in the case of AF, um, that cardiomyopathy is not going to be undone, so you've then got permanent heart failure if you develop the tachycardia-induced cardiomyopathy. Now, there are other arrhythmias as well that can cause heart failure through the same mechanism. If they cause ventricular rate to be too high, then the ventricles aren't going to have time to relax uh, and fill with blood properly, so they're going to be contracting on only a partly forward volume and therefore they're going to be ejecting less blood so cardiac output is going to go low. So arrhythmias can cause heart failure if you control the arrhythmia, if you rate control the arrhythmia, the main example being AF, uh, so that the ventricles are contracting at a normal rate despite the atrial arrhythmia, uh, then you can treat that heart failure and reverse it. However, if you have poorly controlled AF, AF going with a far too fast ventricular response for a long period of time, you will develop a tachycardia-induced cardiomyopathy. That will also contribute to the heart failure. And even if you then control the arrhythmia, get ventricular rate under control, that cardiomyopathy will not be undone and you will then have a permanent heart failure. So that then concludes our discussion of the different causes of heart failure. In the next video, what we will discuss is the consequences of heart failure. Um, and we will discuss specifically things like cardiorenal failure, hypervolemia, cardiorespiratory failure, cardiohepatic failure, many of which we've already talked about earlier on, but we'll solidify that in uh, our final parts of this video.